All right, welcome everyone to our webinar this morning. I'll get us started. My name is Chris Taylor. I'm our Marketing Communications Manager for the Trimble MEP Division, and I'll be joined today by Randy Swain, who will be doing the, the majority of our presenting and walking you through um, the core of our content this morning. Um, as we get started, I just wanted to take a minute, provide a quick intro to Trimble MEP, go over a few, few housekeeping items, and then I will turn it over to Randy to run us through our content this morning. If we take a quick peek at our agenda, as I mentioned, I'll run us through a quick overview. We'll have the main, pre main presentation, and then we will have questions at the end, um, should you have them. We would, we would suggest that you guys ask them over the Q&A or the chat functionality um, as we go through the presentation today. Um, the audio for today, as I've gotten a question here, is that as we get going, you guys can join either via computer audio, or if you click up in the, in the WebEx toolbar on your thing, there is a, a little button for teleconference. If you click that, you'll be able to dial in via a phone. As I mentioned, everyone will be muted as they enter the conference, so there, there isn't really a big difference on whether you're on the teleconference or on your computer audio. Um, and, and all questions will be taken over the Q&A or the chat functionality as we, we close here today. Um, we are recording the webinar, so we will be sending that out at the completion uh, likely tomorrow once it has a chance to render. Uh, we also just did a webinar this morning focused on the, the HVAC aspect of, of design to fabrication or engineering model to fabrication, and this one is focused on the mechanical side. We'll include both of those videos should you want to go back and look at one of the others um, if you guys have a dual shop of some kind. If we take a quick peek at the Trimble division as a whole and kind of its evolution as it entered the marketplace back in 2008, predominantly focused on native Trimble hardware as it related to some of our field layout technologies and solutions, um, through the acquisition of some of the companies that entered us into the estimating space, design, CAD, fabrication, the data side when it comes to trade service, and some of our, our other acquisitions that we've made for groups that are focused more in the European markets. Trimble's really come a long way and is really focused on the MEP market and made it a core of its focus so that we can look at, you know, how we grow productivity solutions and help our contractor base become more productive and more profitable in the work that they're doing. Today we have a little over 700 team members focused exclusively on MEP. I think that that's probably the most amongst many of the technology solutions providers in this industry. Um, so we're making significant investments in R&D and, and helping our, our solutions grow to facilitate the needs of our customer base. Um, we obviously have a global presence when it comes to our MEP solutions. Most of us here are focused on our, our North American contractor market. We do have large groups in the European market and in Asia Pacific as well. If we look at the portfolio and kind of how we approach this market, it really is to provide solutions across the entire life cycle of a project, from winning the job on the estimating side to doing the work on the design, modeling, fabrication, and also taking that out to the field and doing the installation, 3D scanning. And then once that's complete, kind of managing the job from a change order management, project management, tool and asset management perspective. And throughout that life cycle, our kind of services team sits right in the middle and provides everything from modeling services to scanning services to help contractors compete in what is becoming an increasingly competitive marketplace on the BIM side and also, you know, keeping up. We all know we have problems keeping up with, you know, the technology and the staffing that's required sometimes as projects scale up and scale down. You know, and lastly, we, our, our main focus is really to transform the way our clients work, whether that's MEP engineers, contractors, suppliers, or manufacturers. Our solutions are really designed to kind of propel forward the way that everyone's working to help them work more profitably and more productively as they go about their business. So now that I've, I've, I've had you guys walk through that and kind of giving you a brief description of what the division is, kind of what we do, I'll turn us over to Randy, and he will focus in on our core of our presentation today. Thanks, Chris. I'm going to go ahead and just share my screen. So everybody should start seeing my screen now. And I want to thank everybody for taking the time out of their busy day. My name is Randy Swain. I'm the Trimble representative for the East Coast Products. And what we're going to look at today is we're going to be taking a uh, typing system from a Revit model. It doesn't matter how it was drawn in Revit. And we can pick the system, the specification we want it to be brought into AutoCAD MEP, assigning it real manufacturer's content data. 
taking into consideration all the makeup of the joints, so getting accurate cut lengths. So the first place that I'm going to start is in the Revit model. So as I go over here and I open up my, my Revit model here, we have a little CSA theater job that we have brought up here. And this is a really a pretty good little model. And I come back up here and if I click onto my view and say I want to come over to the visibility graphics on this, I can really filter this down by saying I want to turn off, let's say, everything, but for right now we're just going to focus on the domestic hot water. So I've turned everything else off and I'll just go ahead and okay that and that gives us this in the model. If I come in here and look at any particular item in Revit, and I'll just click on this elbow, for instance, to, to bring up the information on that elbow, you'll notice they drew this as a, a long been PVC Schedule 40 DWV. And this is the domestic hot water system that they have here identified as that. Well, we all know that's not going to fly. That's not what you're going to do your domestic hot water out of. So it doesn't matter how it was drawn in Revit. We can bring it into any material type that we want. The first thing we have to do, we have to capture the information out of Revit. So by just uh, putting my cursor over the pipe and clicking the tab key, that's selected that entire, entire domestic hot water system. From that, I can just come up here and say, I want to go to my add-ins. I want to go over here and I want to export this selection. So in exporting this selection, I'm just going to say this is going to be the domestic hot water. And we'll just go ahead and we'll save that to a little folder on my desktop called demo. So once we've saved that, we can always come in here and turn off the element, hide the element. So if I had additional pipe systems on here, I can bring them in one at a time. So I can go ahead and decide what material types I want to bring these into in AutoCAD MEP. So once we've selected that, we're now going to move to AutoCAD MEP. And we're going to go ahead and bring up the uh, drawing with some of the equipment already on it. We can do it into a blank drawing or into a drawing with the equipment on it. We have the routing preferences that are set up that tells me what the uh, fittings are going to be. So if I come up here to manage and I come over to my pipe routing preferences, and I'm going to bring this into my copper solder. So when I select that, you can see I've selected Nibco fittings here and Mueller copper pipe. So that's going to go ahead and bring that information into this routing preference. But that only handles pipe, elbows, keys, reducers, joints, in other portions, I'll come back here to my home tab and I'll come over here and look at my pipe fabrication preferences. So when I go over here and look at my East Coast solder copper uh, routing preference, you can see here I say if you see a ball valve with a lever handle, I want you to bring that in as a, a Milwaukee bronze solder valve. Any fittings that aren't in the routing preferences such as taps and uh, traps and such as that, we just map those in that uh, pipe fabrication preferences. So now I can just come up here and say I want to go to my insert, and I want to go over here to my Revit, and I'm going to tell it, I want to go ahead and bring in this domestic hot water. I'm going to go ahead and open that, and now I'm just going to select the system I want to bring that into. So you can see I can bring that in no matter how it was drawn in Revit, I can bring it into any of these different systems I've set up. So I'm just going to go ahead and say finish. Now this is going to take about, I think it's about 90 seconds to import all this piping into the um, AutoCAD MEP. But it's what it's doing, it's going through there and it's finding every one of the fittings and replacing it with real manufacturer's uh, data. So if you'll notice in the lower right-hand corner of my screen, it's saying it's importing a Revit system. So that's converting everything from that generic uh, PVC system to a real specification for cop copper solder. As it brings it in, you'll see it paint up on the screen, and we'll go in here and we'll start looking at some of the parts that it's brought in. But this saves a tremendous amount of time by reusing the engineer's data. Now, granted, the engineer's data is not always perfect, and we're going to find some errors. But the errors can be easily fixed using the East Coast error log that will take and identify the error and jump you to that spot to let you know what you need to fix. And we'll cover that here in just a second as soon as this gets through importing. But uh, again, it's, it's a fairly large uh, run of pipe. I think there's about 1,400, 1,500 linear feet of pipe in this that it's bringing in. So when you think about how long it would take you to draw that system, you can see there it's brought that all in for me at this point. And if we come in here and look, you can see here where it brought my valves in. If I hover over that valve, there's that Milwaukee bronze valve soldered by solder, okay? So all that's been brought in. 
if I come over here and I click onto a piece of pipe here, I can come over here and right click and say, I want to go in here and I want to uh, set the pipe lengths. So I'm going to go over here and I want to set the pipe lengths to be 20 feet. And I'll just say, I'm going to go ahead and select the objects. So I'm going to go through here and I'm going to select the objects that I wanted to break down here. And I'm just selecting a few of the pipe objects. And go ahead and let it repair those, let's shorten those. So that broke those into its default length, added the couplings in here for me. So this is now ready to go ahead and start fabricating off of. If we come back here to home and we go back here, if you come in here and look at any of this, but what I want to do first is I want to come in here and I want to maybe make a spool out of one of these parts. So from this, I can simply come over here and open up my fabrication palette. And now since these are all real manufacturer's content, I can come over here and say, I want to go in here and I want to design myself a uh, uh, new category. So I'm going to build a folder structure here. And I'm going to rename this to be my domestic hot water. So I'll just name that folder whatever I want. Now I'll tell them I want to go ahead and I want to define a spool. So I'm going to say I want everything here to be in spool number one. So I'm going to go ahead and say I just want that elbow to that T and maybe that short piece of pipe right there. So that's going to be my spool number one. So if I come back now and I want to define another spool, I just hit define spool. And maybe I want this to be spool number two with that. Let's say everything up to this point and the T and the drop. Maybe that's going to be my spool number two. So now I go ahead and hit that. Now I can just say go ahead and generate those spools, and it's going to go ahead and make me some spool drawings. So if I come back now and I want to open one spool, I'll just say let's open that spool number one there. And there is my spool with every cut length of the pipe in it, taking into consideration how far that pipe goes into that solder cup fitting. It's also collected all my fitting data. Now, all of this is customizable. The schedules are customizable. The viewport is customizable. You can take and just click into your viewport and say, well, maybe I'd rather see that from a different direction. I want to spin that into another ISO. And then just come right back and say, reconnect the bubbles on that. And now I can also say, go ahead and add any dimensions to that. So now that we brought that in, all the dimensional information is added. So we know exactly the cut to those. But up here we have the exact cut leaks making up everything for the pipe. So you can go ahead and have your uh, pipe school sheets and customize them any way you want to customize them. I'll go ahead and close this out, and I'll go back into the model now for a minute. And I'm going to go in here and say, well, now I want to put a legend on the drawing. So I'm going to just type in spool. And I'm going to tell it that I want to put a legend on the drawing. So I just hit L for legend. I'm just going to put this legend, oh, let's say right here. So that's going to show me spool number one will be yellow, spool number two will be green. All I do is say apply that display theme, and now you can see the differences in my spool. I also have the ability to tag these spools any way I want to tag them. So if I come back down through here and I want to go in here and say I want to put in here the spool number, by just simply clicking onto the piece of pipe or the fitting or whatever it is I want to connect to here, that's giving me my spool number one. So I can tag the spools or I can use them as a um, graphics, change the color of the graphics, and I've created my spools here. We can also come back and take and add hangers into this model. If I come back here and say, I want to put some hangers onto this, and I'm going to go ahead and click onto this pipe right here, and I'm going to tell it that I want to come in here and I want to add hangers. So as I go to add hangers, I'm going to go ahead and I want to come over to my uh, dialog box here, and that pipe was up at 112 feet, I believe it was. I want to hang it at 114 feet, put the top of the hanger at 114 feet. And I can say if I want an upper attachment on one of the trapeze hangers, I want to do it with an adjustable beam clasp. I've told it I want to use trapeze hangers, and I want to be able to offset this to the left to go ahead and pick up the other pipes. So if I go ahead and just hit OK on this, it's going to run through placing my hangers. And there it went through there, and it placed all my trapeze hangers there for me. And we can give you the cut links of the uh, unistrut, the rod, and you can see up here on my adjustable beam clamp, I'm giving you what we call a circle of influence that if you can't get your wrench on that beam clamp, it can show you an interference on that. From that as well, I can now take this and I can get any kind of a material list I want to get out of this model. So I'm going to go ahead and put this back into its plan view here. And I'm going to come over to my schedules and say, I want to go over here and get a uh, East Coast schedule. 
So we'll just say, let's go ahead and get the uh, hot fittings. So I'm going to go ahead and say I want to select the entire model. Now here is a complete schedule of every fitting in this model. And these are all totally customizable schedules. You can add or delete information from them as, as you see fit. If I come back over to my uh, palette here, and I want to move up here, now I want to get all the pipe quantities. So I'll go ahead and select the East Coast Pipe Quantity Schedule. Again, I'll sweep the model for that. And now I've got cut links of every single piece in the model. And again, these are all customizable. For instance, right now I've just got cut links. If I look here at the bottom, I have no totals. But if I want to come back and add that, I just click onto the schedule, simply tell it that I want to edit that schedule style, and I'm going to come over here to the total link. I want to modify that, and I want to add a total. So now I add a total to that, and now there's 1,447 feet, one and a quarter inches of copper pipe in this model. And that was all done in about 10 minutes' time. So you can see that it's taking and reusing the engineer's data and bringing it into AutoCAD and EP can save you a tremendous amount of time of redrawing the project. This is now ready to spool. It's ready to uh, get any material list out of. These material lists can be clicked on and they can go to export. We can send them right out to a Microsoft Excel file so you can pick it up in Excel. And at that point, I'd like to just kind of open it up for questions. Um, we can we can come in and make any modifications very easily with this. Once once you're in into the system here, and if you need to move something, that one of the things AutoCAD and UP and East Coast offers is some very valuable grips. So I want to move that over 12 inches. I'll just type in 12, and it'll move that over. And notice it did not change the end location of this part. Okay. We also have the ability to come back and run parallel pipes. So when I come back in here and I want to run parallel pipes, I can take this pipe and this pipe and say I want to run those and maintain the spacing on them. So if I just go ahead and start modeling those wherever I need to go, it's known to keep the same spacing on those. And when we come back in here and we look at one of the parts and we go to the extended data over here, this is going to show me everything about that elbow that we know. Even down to the weight, the pricing code on it, part number, anything that you want to see visible on that elbow is available for you. We go up and we add in to the style manager and into the documentation objects here, property set definitions. We use what we call the EC pipe system data. And this is all the information that's available on this piece of pipe. And it can all be shown in the properties palette. When this drawing is passed to another user that has AutoCAD MEP but not East Coast, all those properties are still available. You don't need object enablers or object viewers to see them. So it makes it one of the most BIM compliant CAD systems on the market because everything lives in the properties. Everything is easily modifiable as well. By just clicking on to something, you can come up here and say you want to modify. We can modify elevations, systems, sizes, okay? If we put doc, uh, if we put uh, annotation down already, if I take and, and said I wanted to add the elevation, I want to put center pipe elevation onto this piece of pipe. So I just put that here. It's 109 foot 6 inches. If I want to change that, all I have to do is just simply click onto that piece of pipe. Then we're going to modify a run, and I'm going to change the elevation of this run right here to, let's say, 115 feet. As I do that, you see how the, the annotation updates as well. And we now have the uh, layout here with all of that. If you put a change into something uh, to change a size, for instance, maybe you want to come here and you want to change a particular size of pipe. Again, it's just a matter of clicking onto the part. Coming back to your palette, saying I want to go ahead and change that to a different size. I'm going to go back here. Oh, you have to be in my design tab. I'm in the wrong tab. So I can just come back here and, and select that and say now I want to change that to three quarter inch. That went through there and updated it.
Now it's three quarter inch. So if we had it annotated, we'd update the annotations as well. And that is how we bring the generic Revit model into AutoCAD MEP with East Coast, assign it all the necessary specifications, and are able to bring this into fabrication without redrawing the project, just making a few modifications here and there where we need to go. And with that, I think I will open it up to questions and see see what we have for questions. Awesome. Thank you, Randy. And if you guys do have questions, feel free to pass them along via the Q&A or the chat features within the WebEx. Um, we do have a couple that have come in. William was wondering, what do you give back to the engineers? Is it a Revit drawing after you've made these, these changes? Uh, not today we don't. Today we're giving them back. Uh, we have the AutoCAD MEP uh, drawings we can give back. We can also send it back to Revit, but it's sent back as a solid. And that they can be brought into Navis, they can be coordinated, you know. But it, but it would be a solid. Um, we have on the duct side of it, the rectangular and the round duct will go back to Revit as a native object. We don't have it on the piping yet. Great. And then uh, another question that came in is: Is can the schedule be sent out to the techs in the field, and and if so, in what format? The schedules. Uh, mm -hmm. Yes, the schedules can be sent out. They can be sent out as a just as a text form because you can click on any schedule and you have the ability to convert it to, to come over here and say you want to go and um, uh, let's see here edit object select this or convert to a table and then you can send that table out as a piece of text or you can send it out to Excel and send the Excel file out as well. And you can modify these schedules. Like if I came through here and wanted to add something to the schedule. I can just come over here and say I want to edit the schedule style. And again, I have all these different columns up here that I'm adding. But if I wanted to add something else, I can just say add column and I can scroll down through any of the information that I have in the properties, any of it, it doesn't matter, and say, okay, I want to send that out. So if I wanted to send out a system, a part number, uh, I can do a school reference list, if I've scrolled items, anything that lives in the properties can be sent out. You can also go into the database, which we call Part Manager, which if I go to Part Manager, this is our database, and we'll just go ahead and click out of this right here, and we'll go back up here to the pipe. And so when I go to pipe here, and I go into any one of my items, if I go into my database, and just I want to open up this field here, we're able to come in here and add custom attributes, so add custom columns. So if you wanted to put a call out, note, a labor factor, a material price on any of these parts, it's just a matter of simply coming back to your main sheet right here and saying, I want to go add a custom attribute. And so by clicking onto that, it will add that attribute that will pass all the way from part manager into AutoCAD MEP, be schedulable, reportable, taggable. Great. So um, one of the other questions that came in from Roger was if we have Victolic and Presbit specs within the program. Yes, we do. We, we can come in here and we can draw with Victolic or Presbit. It's just a matter of going here and picking your routing preference. So I'll pick a groove routing preference right here, and I want to go ahead and draw with a groove spec. And same thing as you're converting them. Here I've got whatever size I want to pick it with. I'll say 6 inch. And now as I go ahead and draw this line in here, that's going to be drawn as Victolic. So if we zoom in here and look at it, there we've got the Victolic couplings. If I hover over that, you can see there's that it's a ductile line painted coupling. But I can take after I've drawn it and just simply select the system and say, let's change that to welded. So by just coming over there and selecting the thread by weld specification, no um, router lines needed. Now I come through and inserted weld gaps in that, and now we've got the weld bin system in there. So yes, we have a very large database that comes with it. Awesome. And there's a couple questions relating to insulation here, one being can insulation thickness be added, and the other being can you turn insulation on? You can, you can do it as you draw. If I come over here to draw a pipe, and I'm going to draw this pipe, and I just scroll down through the properties palette here until I get to my insulation thickness, which, uh, let's see. Oh, there, right there. I say I want two inch insulation on this. 
So as I draw that, that's got the lens insulation added to it. Or after the fact, I can come back and grab the piping system and say, now I want to go back and I want to get the uh, uh, insulation and turn it on now. I'll say I want one inch insulation on this. So that added the insulation to this run. And those that line structures can be dotted, dashed, whatever. The other thing about this is if you come over here and you go to place hangers on this, if I click onto that and I say I want to go add the hangers to this, and this time I'm going to use some clevis hangers, so I'll go ahead and select the type of hanger routing I want. So I'm going to do a steel pipe clevis, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hang from that elevation. It's fine. It's whatever I want to do with an upper attachment is good. And now notice it's showing me here a hanger of 8 inch. Because of the insulation thickness, it knew to oversize the hanger for that system. So now when I take this and look, put this into the object viewer, and we'll just flip this up here. We can see that the top, see the insulation, and you can see that the hanger went on outside the insulation. But if you wanted to override that simply by coming back here and saying add hangers, I could always come back and override that and say I want the, the hanger to be inside the insulation by just selecting here and saying, no, I want to put a 6-inch or a 4-inch or whatever the size the pipe was. So you had the best of both worlds. Awesome. And we have another one wondering if um, we have an equipment building feature such as for pumps and tanks. We do. Uh, inside our, our product, we have, if we come up here to the Home tab, we have a couple of things. We have over here where we have a, a parametric part wizard. So I can come over here and say, okay, I want to build a pump, and I want to go ahead and I want to build this pump, a different type of pump maybe, and I can just plug in the data per the graphics here and then give it a name and a description, and that stores it in the database. We can also bring in uh, Revit models, uh, AutoCAD DWG files in 3D, and assign connectors to them so that when you touch onto the part, it knows exactly what pipe you're bringing out of that. So if I came back in here and I went to select a piece of equipment, and I'm just going to go up here and say I'm going to collapse some of this down, and I'm going to go to all installed multi view parts for mechanical. Let's say I want to come down here to get a pump. So if I go to select a pump, I'll select what type of pump I want. And then I can place that pump in the model at an elevation. I'll say I want to get a zero elevation, and I'll place that pump here. So now I'll close that, but now that pump is intelligent so that when I come back and I click onto it and I grab a hold of the grip right here, it knows the elevation, the size. It's giving me everything that I need to bring that out of this. And so I'll just go ahead and route that wherever I need to. And it also is smart enough to know that I need a flange on that. So I can tell it that I want to go ahead and put on a, a threaded flange because I'm running threaded pipe off of this and run that wherever it needs to go and just place it. Great. And then one of the other questions we got Randy here is, is there a trial version available of the software? We don't normally do trial versions. Uh, if, if you'd like to give me a call direct, uh, I can talk to you about some things that we can do about that. But uh, as a general answer, we do, usually don't do trial versions through Tremble. No, perfect. And one of the other ones that came in is, is do you have the ability to do shop fabricated steel spooling fittings like mitered elbows or branch welds? It does. It does. We we have the ability to come in here and if I come back and I you know get a little larger size piece of pipe here, I can pull off with a what we call an OLED or a shaped nipple by just grabbing the grip and then setting it in the properties palette that I want to do a takeoff instead of a T. So right here I've got T only. I'm going to say I want to do a takeoff, okay? So now and I want to change that size down probably to something a bit smaller off of that. So I can say I want to come in here and I want to get a, uh, let's say, a 3-inch, and I want to pull that off here. So that put my Victolic nipple on there onto that. We can do weld alets, thread alets. We can do shaped nipples. Uh, it's just a matter of how you want to do it. Like right now I'm in my... Uh, routing preference thread by groove. I'm going to go ahead and change that to my uh, thread by weld and say I want to bring another one off. And now you can see it's going over here and it's looking for a, a weld alet or a thread alet. Since I'm using the three-inch pipe, it's to pull up a weld alet for me. 
but I can always change that and make that a shaped nipple, and I can make that come off of any angle, and I can make it a fish mouth if I choose to. So when you come back in here and you go to put that another piece of pipe in for that, if I come back over here to pull off of that, and I want to go here, I can just come back to my preferences back here and say now I'm going to go to my fitting settings, and what do I want to use for a takeoff? So I can come right here to my takeoffs, and instead of doing this as a uh, well, I'm going to say I want to do it as a, a welded shaped nipple. I want to bring that off, and I want to bring that off at any angle. I want it off at a 45, and there's my shaped nipple there off at a 45 degree angle. Awesome, thanks, Randy. Um, one of the ones that came in is, do you have the ability to pitch piping? Yes, we do. Uh, if we come back here to run um, float pipe, I'll just select pipe. I'll go change it to, let's say, a, a, a no-hub system, and I'm going to say I want to break that down every 10 feet. And when I come back in to bring that in here, I'm going to say, okay, my elevation's at 10 foot right there, but then I'm going to say I want to slope minus one-eighth of an inch per foot. So if I come over here and start running this pipe, wherever I want to go with it, and we'll go ahead and end that. Let's go ahead and just come back and just place my flexible couplings in there, okay? If we take a look at this on the slope, so I can say, let's just go ahead and put this into my object viewer and look at it from the front view. You see there's the slope in the pipe. But we're going to take that a step further now. Is I'm going to take that, I'm going to put here, I'm going to say I want to come back and add hangers to this, okay? And so as I go to add hangers, I'm going to say I want to hang from, let's say, 12-foot uh, elevation, and I want to use my uh, cast iron pipe clevis hangers. And if I want to, I can give it whatever type of upper attachment I want, any of the information here. If I say okay, it's going to go through there, and it knows that this is a plumbing system, and it knows it has to hang so far either side of every flexible coupling. So as we come back through this, and it's going to go ahead and place those hangers, it knew to add those so far apart of each uh, coupling. By looking at this in the front view again, by just saying I want to go to the object viewer and put this into the slope, all the hanger rods are from the same location. So I can come back into my model now and say I want to come over here and I want to run a schedule for the hangers. So I'm going to go ahead and just select all these hangers and say I want to do a, a hanger and rod schedule. And there's the cut length of every single rod in that rod. You want to come down here and see how much rod you need. You just can say edit that schedule. And we want to come over here and we want to go and go to the length. We want to modify. We want to add a total. Okay. And then now we've got 5,814 feet of the all thread rod. Great, and probably have time for just a couple more questions here, guys. One of the ones that came up is, does it have the ability to pick up on human design errors, such as recognizing a code install violation? No, it does not. You still need to know what you're drawing. It will, however, uh, error out for you. If, you. if you came in and maybe the engineer drew, let's say, with a 12-inch uh, welded run, and he puts in a 12 by 12 by 1 T, well, we know that doesn't live in the database because there's no such animal. So it will come out and it will error as it's importing, and it will give you the ability to go in there and make a human determination of what you want to do with that. Do you want to do, use a thread alert, um, or how do you want to make that connection? Great. Um, if anyone has any more questions, feel free to pass them through. Um, if you guys think of one after the fact, you guys can email Randy at Randy underscore Swaim, S-W-A-I-M, at Trimble.com, or you can email us generically at meplearning at Trimble.com, and we'd be happy to address any questions that might come up um, should you get off this call and, and think of something. Um, with that, I think that, that we'll wrap up today. Randy, I really appreciate you taking the time to, to run us through this. I appreciate everyone jumping on here and the, the questions that came in. They were definitely uh, useful and helpful. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, guys.